evening and welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm going to show you different kinds of historical headdresses that have been worn over the centuries. Some I've used in my videos and some that I haven't worn yet. And with the help of one of my doll heads, I will also show you how these were actually worn. So it will include a bit of basic hairstyling as well. I have my wooden brush and my trusty hairpin box. Let's start with a medieval headdress I've made very few videos taking place in the Middle Ages maybe two or three and I haven't had a chance to wear this one yet and I don't know if I will so this was inspired by French fashion from the late Middle Ages and mainly working women from the last quarter of the 15th century wore these. It's made of linen, which is historically great, and although it looks like a flat piece of fabric at first sight, once it's properly folded on the head, it makes such a beautiful shape. So, I will start by making a simple bun so we don't get the hair in the way. Depending on the time and the area, women may plait it on the head, but I will keep it simple. So it will be easier to hold the hair. needed to be beautiful because it will be hidden by the coif anyway. One last to secure it. Alright, 
Now I'm going to place the headdress on the head This is the front part All right. And I will take each part of the back wings them at the back and tie them off at the top of the head making a double knot So two strings at the back. These are optional but they were added to secure the piece on the head even more. And these will be tied And now we can finally fold the front part so we can see the face again. For centuries, ladies have worn bed pieces for different reasons to preserve their modesty, especially for married women, or to show their social rank. And much later, simply for the sake of wearing a beautiful hat. Adjusting the headdress so it perfectly fits the head. one of my favorites. Maybe I should have I ironed it before. But I really like how it frames the face. Let's take it off and move to the 16th century English court. This is a headpiece I have worn multiple times for the Lady of the Manor character. It's inspired by the fashion in Tudor times and it comes in two parts. First, a handmade hair snood for the back with beads and a brocade piece for the front. It's stiffened by a hairband slipped inside which is not historically accurate, of course, but it does the job, and this is much easier to put on your head.
Usually women had very long hair at this time, so they would gather most of it into the snood. There is not only one way to do it, but what I like to do is to plait a small front section of the hair on the head, so it gives something thick to pin the hair snood into. Here we go. Removing the pins. Let's give it a good brushing again. So the hair is nice and fluffy. Now let's make two small plaits. Using front sections. doesn't have to be beautiful, because we won't see it. Same on the other side. Another simple three strands spread. And then I will just put the rest of the hair into the snood so it nicely fills it. looks good to me. I'm going to secure it with two pins directly into the braid. One and two. One 
once the hair snood is correctly adjusted, I can add the pocket band. sure that the ends of the hair band won't show. snood. What I like to do is adding a bit of fake hair. Oh, this one looks good. is a quite simple hairstyle but it makes you look very elegant Now let's jump to the 18th century with a very classic and old-fashioned bonnet that we also call a mob cap or charlotte in French. You may have seen this kind of headpiece in paintings showing venerable upper-class women and it was worn until the middle of the 19th century. It is made of very fine white linen, very thin, with a satin ribbon and a delicate knot. And it can be adjusted at the back with some kind of lace. It is very simple. With a basic shape. Usually the hair would be simply styled back with a slightly fluffy front part even though you could also find women wearing it with visible curls on the forehead but I'm not going to curl the hair this time I'm just going to make a simple bun again I'm going to twist it. And 
and peel it. Place it on the head and adjust it so we can see enough of the face. I'm going to tie it at the back Again, these were mainly worn by married women and the higher their social status was the more ruffles, ribbons and intricate patterns it would have had was not only made to show that you were respectable, but it was used as a symbol of one status in society. Some of them would be tied directly under the chin with more ruffles, but these are not my favorite versions. Alright, what do you think? Now I have one last to show you This one is a little bit different because this is an actual historical hat that is supposed to be from the 30s so it is about 100 years old but it clearly has a late Victorian look from the end of the 19th century however it features synthetic materials so I guess the Victorian era was just taken as an inspiration for this piece it has really interesting details like lots of beads These are made of plastic If it was from the Victorian era, it would have been glass brown beads here this looks like synthetic silk and here we have very pretty flowers and I believe this is Synthetic velvet But they're nice 
we have mm, cotton lace, I guess. Very nice lace. And a long velvet ribbon. This looks like cotton velvet. This is a fabric I really like. And inside mm, it looks like I'm not sure. Button. But I'm not sure. Usually it would be placed on the top of the head, but you could slightly lean it to one side or the other. And then tie it under the chin, which was a great way to secure the hat without using a hat pin. And I like to have the knot on the side. Now let's make sure all the ornaments are looking their best and not flattened. Floral hats are all about asymmetry. elegant. It was the last one. Let me know which one was your favorite. And as always, I wish you a very